Hello and welcome to the Spiraling Higher podcast hosted by me, Sam, Mindset and Manifestation Coach. And me, Gina, your Biz and Mindset Coach. We're here to support you on your spiritual journey by bringing you intimate and raw conversations about healing, manifestation, consciousness, and spirituality. We hope this podcast makes you feel less alone as you become aware of your patterns and limiting beliefs to uplevel your life, manifest like a boss, and together, spiral higher. Spiralers, Gina and I just had, I think, one of the most mind-blowing conversations we've had inside of the Spiraling Higher studio. We went pretty deep. We went there. And so before we even try to encompass what you might be (laughs) learning or being introduced to in this episode, we want to tell you actually about how we were introduced to Chris, who is our guest, and um, actually what our initial thoughts were. I think it's important to kind of share that Mm. um, because what was so mind-blowing about the conversation was how our expectations of how the conversation might go were actually completely shattered. And I mean that in the best way. It was just so far beyond anything we could have consciously thought of. It genuinely was such a beautiful co-creation that we allowed to come through. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, I think when we first heard about Chris, we were like, hmm, this will be an interesting conversation. Like not really imagining what we would unlock. Yeah, I think the depth and the width of the conversation I wasn't expecting. And um, I think the angles and perspectives he gave in the episode, I said something like he completely changed like the color scape of what I see in, in the stuff that you yes. and I know where I literally feel like there's another layer of color that I can see now um, that he really yes. helped us to like unlock. 100%. It feels like learning the word for an experience you've been having and then, or maybe a word that you've never been able to identify. And then you're like, that's the word. And then suddenly your experience feels so much more real because of it. So Mm -hmm. um, a little bit about Chris, which I do share when we begin the episode, but I just want to share with you all now, he's actually a retired US Navy SEAL. So for a lot of his earlier life, his young adulthood, he was in the military. And he actually told us about how that experience had him in a very constant constantly dysregulated nervous system where of course in the military it's necessary to like feel fear and anxiety i mean you're literally trying to protect your body your comrades the country I mean, that's right? real survival state legitimately a real survival state. Yes. So yeah, he was in this real survival state for a long time. And then he'll share it more in the episode, but I'll just quickly go over it. Of course, returning back to real life or daily life yeah. um, as a citizen is a very disorienting, hard to reintegrate type of process, mm-hmm. um, which of course revealed to him so many symptoms of pain of that remaining fear, or as he calls, strama in the body, which is a term he coined to... Um, be the type of trauma you experience with the combination of stress and the accumulation of time. And so it was just fascinating for him to begin telling us a story about being a SEAL, how that contributed to the harmful effects and pain from not being in a regulated state, Mm -hmm. Um, but then how that essentially fed his insatiable curiosity to figure out how do you actually resolve stress, not just manage it, Mm -hmm. right? Because I think we're all familiar with stress management, like go exercise, you know, do some yoga, do some meditation, um, hang out with your friends, right? Um, And we're really encouraged to manage stress um, in both positive and negative ways. It's also socialized um, for us to drink to get rid of stress, Mm -hmm. Um, even use caffeine sometimes that can also eliminate stress for others. So both of these are negative and positive ways that we manage stress, but they don't actually remove the accumulated stress or strama as he coins it. So yeah, it was like a totally paradigm shifting conversation. Yeah, I think it just gave us a different way of looking at stress because you're right. I think when we think about stress management, we're really just treating the symptoms and not really getting to the root. And I think, you know, for the people that are listening, obviously we're doing a lot of different forms of work, but we'll just say that the way that he explains it and his perspective and his work is just a completely different angle and inroad into the healing and the deeper, the deeper healing, like at the root. Mm -hmm. And so 
stay stay with us throughout this conversation and you'll yes. you'll probably have the same kind of mind blowing journey as we did and we totally. will say that you're going to hear that at the end it's kind of ends on a bit of a cliffhanger there's so much more that we want to talk to him about. So we've already agreed, as you'll hear, that he's going to come back. Um, So (laughs) you can definitely record any questions that you have for us and let us know what you have for the next time because I I have so many questions. I know. It was just not enough time because, you know, the first half of this conversation really explains, obviously, the context that prompted him to explore all these different types of medicine and this information. Yeah. Um, which obviously, obviously everyone has a story, right? Like, how do you get into healing? Like, how do you start teaching people about stress resolution and your true body intelligence? Um, but yeah, just stick with us throughout this conversation because it really quickly, almost slowly ish (laughs) unfolds. It's both quick and slow. Yeah, It unfolds into one of the most spiritual conversations I think I've ever had. Um, And it definitely gave me the somatic experience of being just blown open Mm -hmm. where you realize something or you identify an experience in a new way. And you're like, what? Mm -hmm. Like, oh my God, like this, it just, it just wasn't a repetition of things I've already heard before. Yeah. It was, it was so unique to his experience and his research and his life. Mm -hmm. And um, he's such a blessed being, like his energy was so so gracious. And um, you'll even hear if you stick with us till the end of the episode, an opportunity he offers any of you listeners, but I'm not going to tell you now because you have to get to the end. Listen to the end. (laughs) So again, um, after this episode, if you have any remaining burning questions, put them into the free spiraling higher community where you can chat with us and continue this dialogue because um, yeah, this is definitely not going to be the last time we co-create. Yes. There is a little section in circle called pod talk. So go ahead and put them mm-hmm. in there and we will, we will see them. We'll see you in the, on the other side. Bye. Bye. Welcome back, Spiralers. Today, we are so excited to bring you our new guest, Christopher Maher, because it was actually one of our goals for season three to have more men share their healing journey on the podcast. Yeah. I think we have had a lot of women. We've shared a lot of our journey, but we haven't heard a lot from the men, the divine the divine masculine. So we're so excited to have him on the podcast today. He is a retired U.S. Navy SEAL, best-selling author, and a holistic wellness pioneer who is changing the way we view and relate to stress. And so, Chris, welcome to Spiraling Higher. How are you doing today? I'm great. I mean, that's the best introduction ever. Just like straight to (laughs) the the point, (laughs) very clear, super concise. And we can jump into this conversation. I'm actually feeling really good. I was, uh, got up this morning. I drove to the other side of LA. I have a teacher named Nikki Osanke. He does esoteric acupuncture. He's the world's foremost authority in that space. And so whenever I'm in LA, I always see him two, three times a week. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Fabulous. It sounds like you're really keeping the chi just moving, yes. flowing effortlessly through the body. Yeah. Um, well, I'm just so excited to chat about um, how you came to begin on your healing journey because you had, I mean, a very intense background as a yeah. Navy SEAL. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, just, I'm going to assume I could be wrong, but I don't think that somatic healing or stress management or even resolution was something that was talked about um, within your con- historical context. So I'm kind of um, curious to hear a little bit about your journey as a Navy SEAL and uh, what happened there that led you into healing and discovering how to reduce stress through true body intelligence. Thank you. Um, you should be a host for a podcast. You're very good at this. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you very much. (laughs) Uh, How how did the journey begin? Um, I would say that I was ignorant, Mm. like severely ignorant to all the things that we're now become aware of as a culture. So Mm -hmm. I was taught um, as a youngster that you show up and you work hard Mm -hmm. and you get what you give, right? And I took that strategy and I applied it to SEAL training and then SEAL training amplified that. Mm. And because I was having success with that strategy, I thought, well, let's just keep using this because it's working. Mm -hmm. I'm getting the recognition I crave uh, from the outside. 
Um, I'm getting to experience and travel around the world doing the things that I dreamed about. And once I left the military, that's when it became extremely obvious that my strategy was faulty, Mm -hmm. right? Like in terms of the military context and having to be ready to save lives and be in a nervous system that was hypervigilant, that yeah, strategy yeah. made a lot of sense. Yes. But once I stepped out of the military and I got into regular life with regular folks, that strategy worked against me. It mm-hmm. worked against me socially because I was too intense. Mm. Uh, it worked against me emotionally um, because I was very fixed in the way that I was functioning. It worked mm-hmm. against me psychologically because it made it very difficult for me to relate to where people were coming from psychologically. And it worked against me physically because I had an intense amount of tension and I had shifted into, I shifted my goals into making it to the Olympic trials. So I had that Olympic dream running in the background, driving me. Mm -hmm. The challenge was I was applying the wrong subset of action. And the action that I was coming from was all hard all day, every day. Yeah. Yeah. Like force. Yes. Just like pushing the envelope every moment. And what I thought was enjoyable because really I didn't know anything else. Exactly. When you're, when you go through childhood trauma, like I did, and my trauma started at three and a half, I had a woman put my hands on a gas stove to teach me to not play with matches. Obviously that was the wrong idea, right? Mm. She could have slapped my, there was like a hundred different things that she could have done. Right. Uh, but she was having a psychotic break. And I think that is the moment that I sort of left myself. I sort of left my body and didn't really get back into reality until I started on the healing journey, but I wasn't really willing to start on the healing journey until I couldn't go anymore. So pain, when it first came into my body, it came into my Achilles tendon of all places. Mm. And then it worked its way up to uh, plantar fasciitis Mm -hmm. and then runner's knee and then iliotibial band friction syndrome and then frozen shoulder syndrome and then neck stiffness and then tight low back and all this was all going on on the left side of my body and the left side of my body as i grew older and got into this healing journey realized that's the feminine side of my body and all of my abuse had come through my relationships with women who were in charge of me Mm. wow so women were um Sorry, I didn't mean to no, interrupt, please. but I'm uh, kind of yeah. curious. How how did you come to realize that or how long did it take you? Because it took that's me, a knowing that takes a while. Uh, let's see. Um, I started to recognize probably by my fourth or fifth injury that all of it was on one side. Mm. And, I, and then I was just sort of like, this is weird. So I remember one day I was sitting down reading a book on all places on the toilet. <laughs> and um, <laughs> of course. And I looked down and I looked at my feet and my left foot was straight ahead. My right foot was turned all the way out to the right. And so I turned my right foot back in. I went back to reading, right? Because that's where men read. (laughs) 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 In case any ladies didn't know, uh, (laughs) this is where we come with our brilliant ideas. Yeah. And I'm sitting here reading and I looked down and my right foot's turned all the way back out to the right again. And I said, Mm. this is weird. And I turned it right back in. And it didn't matter regardless of how many times I turned my foot back to the left, my right foot, it ended up back to the right. And my left foot stayed straight ahead. And that was the moment I was like, hold on, this is weird. And then I started listening to how I was walking and I wore flip-flops a lot. And I realized like a day later that my left one flipped, but my right one flopped. So it went click, plank, click, plank. Click plank. And I thought, this is weird. My whole side of my body on the left is doing something completely different from the right. Mm. And that's when I started to get clued in. And then Mm. I, of course, I didn't realize that that also would apply to me running and training. I just thought about that in terms of walking, right? Yeah. And then eventually I went to see a guy named Stephen Bolger, who was a Heller work practitioner. 
And Hello Work is like an advanced system of rolfing. So they use their elbows and their forearms to go into your connective tissue. And they start to open that up. And it's quite uncomfortable. Like yeah. really, really uncomfortable. Like that was um that was a practice in learning how to meditate and be present with pain. Yeah. As it was leaving my body. Mm. And at that point, I started to realize when he dug in that there was an intense amount of pain, more so on my left compared to my right. Mm. And so now I was getting all these signs. And then it was impossible to ignore. Yeah. And then as I started to research into traditional Chinese medicine, and I started to understand the principles of yin and yang, of hot and cold, of excess and deficiency, mm-hmm. I started realizing like, oh, I'm excess on the left and I'm deficient on the right. Mm. And I started to take those maps in traditional Chinese medicine and any of the other healing systems, Taoism. Uh, that I was studying and apply them, lay them over top of my body so I could start to see what was really going on mm. and what could I do to change this path that I was on. Because I was directly mm. headed for the grave. If I didn't start the healing yeah. journey, sure enough, I would have died from pancreatic cancer, brain tumor, something already. Mm. Yeah, it, it blows my mind how the pain is never showing up without purpose. And unfortunately mm. for humans, we have to experience that pain to mm. change anything. You know, Gina and I this past year, and this will relate really amazingly to what we are going to talk about, but us healing the stress and the constantly upregulated nervous system state, we would have never actually look to change that exactly. until we started to experience the really negative effects of that. And um, something that I just want to acknowledge and hopefully get you to share a little bit more about, which is going to give us a lot more insight too into how disoriented and displaced people are after leaving environments like the military. Um, I love how you said that what was helpful for you there, or maybe even necessary for you there, um, was just completely and totally contrasted with what, with what you needed as a person um, back in like regular day-to-day life. But um, your poor body just t- trying its best to defend itself and the country, right? And being in that state. Um, I, I feel so bad that people come back and then they don't know how to come back into their bodies. And so I'm also a little bit curious about how you found your way into Chinese medicine? Did you already have like a natural distrust of the Western medical system? How did you end up there? Because oftentimes people are really resistant to trying modalities like that. Well, what's interesting for me is I I remember getting flu shots as a child and I I went to a boarding school. So there was no way to say no against the flu shot. Mm. And I always ended up sick. Mm. And then when I was in the military, I was, well, you're not allowed to say no to those flu shots either. Uh, I was always sick. And what Mm -hmm. I mean by that, I was always congested, right? Like yellow Mm -hmm. and green mucus and um, a light cough. And once I got out of the military and I didn't get any flu shots, I was never sick again. Mm -hmm. And I started to put those two together and I started to go, okay, so when... I take Western medicine, it works against me. Other people might have a different experience with it, which is okay. I have no noise. I have no judgment. Um, But for me, it always worked against me. I always Mm. felt worse. And Mm. so as I started to educate myself around detoxification, fasting, and this is 25 years ago, like fasting became a popular term, like what, seven, eight years ago? Yeah. Yeah. Right. And by then I had already done a 48 day fast, no, 44, 44 day fast, right? Wow. Uh, Completely away from food. So as I started to get healthier inside, Western options became less interesting to me. Mm -hmm. In fact, it sort of graded against my system Mm -hmm. because at some point I went to see, I was in a car accident and I went to see a Western medical practitioner. He said, look, you probably need a hip replacement. And he wow. said, well, I said, yeah, but what's involved in hip replacement? He said, you can get on the internet and you can see a surgery. And I got on the internet and I saw a surgery and I thought, no, that's never going to happen. And I knew at some point in my life, there was no pain in my body. And the question for me always was, how do I get back to that point? Mm. And is that possible? Mm-hmm. And mm. one of the guys, it took me about six months to hunt down 
to get a, a session with him. After we had a conversation, he emailed me a book, not emailed me, he mailed me a book. And the book was about traditional Chinese medicine. And um, I think one of the first paragraphs, it talks about, imagine driving down the road and one of your warning lights comes on. And then what you do instead is you just put black tape over the warning light and keep on driving. Yeah. And as soon as I chatted about this, read that, I thought, oh, I get it. There's no need for me to read the whole book. This makes absolute sense already. And so I realized that that's what I was doing, right? I was attempting to get joy and recognition and value from the things that I was doing externally, but Mm -hmm. never really paying Mm -hmm. attention to what was going on internally. Mm-hmm. So I was like, yeah, look, I'm in school, I'm getting an education, I'm studying the things that I want, I'm using my body headed towards my own physical pursuits, but at the same time, my body was getting tighter, I was experiencing more pain, more emotional disconnection, but now what happened is I started to lose my vision, and I started to lose wow. my hearing. Wow. And when you start reading people's out. lips, and I was the type of person, I kept everything to myself, so if I was in pain, you never knew it. Because on the outside, I was like a like a like a well presented statue. Yeah, right? there was a persona. There's an identity that you're upholding. Yeah, and yeah. and my and my body. I didn't know my body was spending a massive amount of energy to uphold this right. Yes. This false mm. projection of who I am. But underneath, I'm suffering. But I'm mm. never acknowledging how much the suffering, how much suffering is going on, because I'm getting so much positive recognition from the outside. Anything I want to do, everyone opens the door for me. This is really super easy. And then once it got into the center of my hip and I could never get away from it, I finally did the most courageous thing I would say my whole life. I called someone up and I said, look, I'm in pain everywhere and I need help. Hmm. And one of my buddies that I used to be in the SEAL teams with that decided he would study yoga and other practices came over my house with a yoga mat and a juicer. And he was basically like, put down the beer and drink this nasty juice. <laughs> I was like, It'll heal you from the inside yeah, out. <laughs> yes, like, this beer tastes much better than this juice, right? But then when he was drinking his, I, to- I realized that, oh my God. He's healthy and fit. I'm fit and toxic. Mm. This is Mm -hmm. the difference. He's healthy and fit. I'm fit and toxic. Mm -hmm. And that was, you know, that was a tough pill to swallow, you know, because (laughs) you, you want me, I wanted to believe that I was doing the right things. Well, you did believe you were doing the right things, right? Like here I am running along thinking I'm doing the right things. But after I got that information, I wanted to still believe that I was doing the right things. Like I wanted to keep my head underneath the pillow yeah, and not really have to look. And, but once he got on the ground and he started moving around with ease in and out of these positions, and I was just like, like a 90 year old man, Mm -hmm. I just was, there was no way to deny that. Yeah. There was no way to go, oh, hey, Chris, let me hop down in this position. Put your left arm over your right, interlace your fingers. And I was like, this is never going to happen. And I can't even get my elbows within six inches of each other. Wow. And so here I was so living in this limited, extremely limited physical body that was fit in terms mm-hmm. of like how far it could go and how fast it could go. But yeah. I never realized that the, li- the the limitations that I had in my body were also the limitations in my mind, the mm-hmm. limitations in my emotions, the limitations in my spirit, in my energy. Yeah. 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 I think what this is really um, pointing to is that the body never lies. The body always tells the truth. It always tells never the does. truth. It's just a matter of are we tuned in enough to hear that? And that's the thing, the body will get louder and louder Mm -hmm. and louder Mm -hmm. until we can hear that. And, you know, I think that's one of the biggest beautiful gifts that we've gotten from doing this work is having this very open communication line with our bodies. It's so clear Mm -hmm. now. I actually can't remember. I mean, I remember the time where I wasn't listening, but I can't, I can't fathom 
me not being able to hear those messages anymore, you know, because they mm. are so obvious when you actually do attune to them. Um, but I would love to hear kind of how you then connected that to your stress, because you obviously then were seeing how, you know, we do have different energetic bodies, not just our physical body, right? There's a mental body, emotional body, spiritual body. So when did you start to really connect the stress that you were experiencing with that pain? And what was that journey in you then learning how to resolve stress? Because I think we're all walking around overstressed. And that's part of the problem is that you're seeing everybody around you carrying the same load as you, if not more. So then we've normalized this type of living with stress all the time. So I would love for you to kind of go into that direction of stress resolution and how you got there, what that connection was for you and what you advise your clients on in relation to that. Yeah, I think in 2008, I met a very special woman and um, and she was, I don't know if you studied any human design at all. She was a direct manifester, mm-hmm. one, one three profile, totally self-absorbed. And, <laughs> and simultaneously, she was very direct, right? Mm. And I needed someone that powerful to push back into me. Mm. And I was in the kitchen, I was moving a piece of furniture, like this big bookshelf, and I reached towards the bottom as I pulled it into me, suddenly my upper back on the left, all of the spinalis muscles went into a hyper state of contraction. And like, I couldn't stand up. And she was like, oh my God, I need to take you to go see Dr. Doug. I was like, Dr. Doug, who's Dr. Doug? Well, he deals with stress. And I was like, stress? I don't, I don't feel stressed, babe. I'm just in pain. <laughs> and she was like, whatever, get in the car. And I was like, okay. And I went in the car and she took me over to his place. And literally he gave me what's called an alignment through the system called alpha biotics. And mm. within 10 seconds, boom, the contraction was completely gone. And I was like, how did he do that mm. in 10 seconds? And so then he started to give me the breakdown of, of, of stress of what happens and how it comes into the body. And that's when I really started to get like the really deep education. Mm. And then I decided I need to go study with the people who educated him. Mm-hmm. And then I started to relate to stress to all the work that I had been developing and it fit over my map to absolute perfection. Wow. And I was like, now I get it. Now I have the missing piece. Mm-hmm. And then I started to basically that organization then would hire me to come in and teach their practitioners about stress because I had such this, this depth of understanding how it related to you, not only at a physical level, but an emotional, at a spiritual, at an environmental level, at a cultural level, right? And then I started to apply these strategies and techniques with this very specific process that they created called the alignment. And then my work went exponential, like Mm. totally exponential. Because once you start to realize that everything is coming from unresolved stress, now Mm. you have something that you can work with because everybody knows, oh, yes, I've been stressed. Everybody's been traumatized too, but hardly anyone can admit they've been traumatized unless they think about a horror film. Right. And the worst case scenario, they think, like, okay, well, that's trauma, but I haven't had that. Yeah. And then I had to create a term and I created a term called strama. I saw that. I love it. Plus time equals strama. And what that means Mm. is the accumulation of stress over time will turn into trauma. And every human on Mm. the planet has strama. Hey, Spiralers, quickly interrupting this episode to tell you that the wait is over and we are finally enrolling again for our life-changing six-month mastermind, The Unlayered Self. Within this coaching container, you get to work in conscious community and with both of us, one-on-one. It's the only offering where you get two coaches, one-on-one time, group coaching, and in-person retreats with our intention being that you get the best of everything when you commit to breaking generational cycles and healing the relationship to yourself. It's truly the experience that we had always wanted at the beginning of our healing journey, but we've talked about it enough. We wanted to share what our client had to say when we asked her to look back on her six-month transformation. I unearthed things that I didn't know. I thought I reached the layer that I needed to reach 
And um, lo and behold, it wasn't the layer. In fact, it was like several layers underneath. But I think one of the most beautiful gifts that I got from this container was just awareness, period. Whether it's self-awareness, whether it's body awareness, whether it's energy awareness, whether it's abundance awareness, like it is insane to have this curtain put up. Yeah. So the awareness, I just, I really treasure how much awareness I have now. And not only that, but, you know, I already considered myself a pretty self-aware person. I think we all were enough of self-aware people to be in this container, to enter into this container. I know I did not meet that self-awareness with compassion before this container. There was just shame. There was a lot of shame. And that is just such a beautiful gift that I got from this container to know why I wasn't growing as what I wanted to grow, like, you know, and be aware of that shame that I was having. It's really wonderful that my family's voices aren't the loudest voices in my head anymore. If you all had the chance to see and experience her pre and post Unlayered Self, you'd be just as amazed as we are. If this mastermind is calling to you, you can get all the deets and apply by clicking the link at the top of our show notes. We begin the journey with an intimate group of conscious women on May 28th, 2024. Now let's get back to the episode. You don't have to be scared to experience fear, I'm realizing. That's Um, right your body can experience the manifestation of fear or stress. And then, like you said, that accumulates. And so I actually want to talk about that because when we think about stress, we hear the term stress management. Yeah, It's like, oh, like do meditation to manage your stress or work out to manage your stress. And what I'm realizing in the word stress management, it sounds like we continue to perpetuate being stressed. Yes. It's like, that's your state of being. You're going to be stressed, but here's how to manage it. That's right. Um, So how do we go beyond stress management into stress resolution? Okay, perfect. So first off, I want to applaud all the people who are in stress management because there's three stages. There's stress ignorance, which is where I began, which is probably where all three of us began, right? Stress ignorance. Then we shifted into stress management, right? And then the question is, how do we get from stress management to stress resolution? So Mm -hmm. I started out in stress ignorance. So anyone who's on the call listening, I want to applaud you for figuring out how to get into stress management. Yes. Yeah. Now there's positive stress management and there's negative stress management. And negative stress management tools are anything that's unnatural in your nervous system. And what I mean by that is nicotine, Mm -hmm. caffeine alcohol, recreational drugs, pharmaceutical drugs, and any behavior that you have that is secretive and or hidden. Mm. Mm. We all have those. Okay. So those are negative (laughs) stress management tools. All right. Right. Positive stress management tools would be like breath work, yoga, um, being creative, mm-hmm. exercise, uh, honesty, nature. walks in nature, mm-hmm. right? Meditation. Like all of these things are positive stress management tools. Okay. But here's the challenge your positive stress management tools will never, ever reduce your lifetime accumulated stress load. They will reduce mm-hmm. your daily accumulated stress. But your lifetime accumulated stress load, it keeps moving with you. So 2023, wherever it was at, you took it into 2024. Yeah. And so what I've been able to do over the last 25 years is gather enough information and create systems that actually reduce your lifetime accumulated stress load. So stress resolution is about your lifetime accumulated stress load. And your lifetime accumulated stress load is everything that you picked up from your mom and your dad in your environment from womb until 13. It's a lot of stuff, Chris. That's a lot of stuff, right? Uh So it's your parents' Uh limiting beliefs, your parents' inner deficiencies, your parents' insecurities, and what you brilliantly said earlier, both of you, your parents' fears. Yeah. And the question is why? Well, from 
womb until 13, the charge on every human's water molecules is negative. And what that means is they're a receptive vessel. Mm. But the first seven Mm -hmm. years, they're purely negative. After seven, they're moving from negative charge to slightly positive. When you turn 13, you're absolutely have shifted into positive charge, which means you're no longer receptive to what your parents want to tell you. And now Mm -hmm. you become your own initiating agent. So let's talk about this for a second. So womb to seven, you're picking up at an unconscious and a subconscious level, all of your parents' unconscious and subconscious stress strategies. And they're being bled into you, into your nervous system. Now that affects you at a subconscious level. Now, an unconscious level is going to occur from 7 to 13, okay? Then at 13, you become a conscious initiating agent, right? Mm. And so every bit of everything that happened after 13 is, let's say, that's going to that's gonna be like a software program inside of your computer, Yeah. right? The first seven years is your absolute hard drive. But here's the beautiful thing. The hard drive, guess where it gets stored? It gets stored in the physical body. From 7 to 13, it gets stored in the emotional body. Mm. From 13 on, Mm. it gets stored in the conscious mental body. And from the moment before you enter the body, your soul, it gets stored in your spiritual body. You see? Wow, wow. So now you know where all these different levels of consciousness live and which Come body they from. live in, which no one's ever tracked this stuff, right? And so once you so know... You said... Go ahead. Sorry, I just want to review it okay. because I'm like learning so much. We also had someone come on to talk about uh, prenatal psychology yeah. and the consciousness before even womb, which is That's interesting. Right. But you said, obviously, the, the spiritual... The spiritual um, body. So in, in your So your spiritual body is the 13 layers of energy that reach from the heavenly realms down to your physical body. Wow. Okay. So the 13th edge is your relationship with source consciousness, right? Mm -hmm. What some people will call God, right? Yeah. Yes. So now there's varying levels of density till we get down to the center of your spine and your spine is the most dense. Mm -hmm. Okay. So that's the first layer. Now from womb until seven, that all that, confusion gets stored in your subconscious down into your physical body from seven Mm -hmm. until 13 it's going to get stored in your emotional body which is your breath okay that's why Mm -hmm. breath work is important why is breath work important because we want to transmute at an emotional level all the all the strategies and patterns that came in from from seven to 13 Mm -hmm. now your conscious mind meditation right is now you're addressing that from what you stored in your mind from 13 up until your age now, okay? So meditation is for a certain age range to penetrate through, right? Breath work is from 13 to 7. Physical somatic body work is from 7 to womb, right? And And then prayer, right? And intent is from your soul. So from the moment you came into your body until the day that you die, that that continues to keep transitioning because you have your soul's matrix and you have your physical body's matrix. And so there's a system in the world for each one of these different aspects of your consciousness. And so at the very minimum, if you're going to become a clear vessel of neutrality that has the ability to change this world, you've got to deal with your unconscious, through breath work, you got to deal with your subconscious through physical somatic work, and you got to deal with your conscious through deep levels of meditation, right? Wow. Okay. I'm kind of freaking out, Chris, because I mean, you are blowing my mind, but you know, I think about how many people start a lot of positive stress management, and that's how they find sometimes even our work. Mm-hmm. And, um, I see a lot of those people, and I was one of them, right? Who you just begin to plateau. Um, and I'm realizing based on the paradigm you've introduced, it's because I'm only addressing like 13 on. That's yeah. right. Um, yeah, you're only addressing 13 so on. 
only 13 on, but Gina and I have both done a lot more somatic work and we are continuing to dive into that. And that's like the next realm. But a lot of people are not either aware or even educated or feel safe with somatic work and healing or maybe even breath work. And so, yeah, I'm just realizing how much locked and stored subconscious info is not being resolved. That's right. Um, yeah. Even if you're someone who, and there's a lot of people who say things like this, like, oh my God, I exercise all the time. I meditate every day. Um, it's like they're doing all the things and it looks like those things are great, but only for one like level of the healing That's in right. this entire system. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. You can only go so deep because what, the beautiful thing about the way that uh, we were designed is that each world has its own domain. Mm. Right. And there's a reason why the subconscious has its own domain and the conscious mind does not have direct access to the subconscious. Yeah. Because imagine mm. the level of manipulation that you could have on yourself at a subconscious level. That would be very dangerous, right? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Wow. I've never heard it uh, described that way because sometimes I do feel frustrated almost that I can't connect them more yeah. cleverly. Yeah. Yeah. But there's actually a, a good thing. That it's good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's actually a good thing because if you, it, if your conscious mind, I mean, think about the conscious mind as like a grain of sand, right? And then think about your unconscious as like a 55 gallon drum of sand. And what that means is potential energy and intelligence. Okay. Mm. And then if you think about the subconscious, you're talking about all the sand on the planet. And you think about the superconscious, you're thinking about all the sand in the universe. Mm. Right? And so Man, do we want that so one grain of sand to have control over all the sand in the universe? Not in a million years. Because that means I could then take the anger that I have and I project at you and everything is connected and I could sideline your life in 0.02 seconds. Mm. So we want the conscious mind to only have so much access, okay? But the beautiful thing is there's now systems on the planet that are being created that we can go into the subconscious and then as we start to transmute and transfigure at a subconscious level, we can be consciously aware of the impact because we can see it with our lives. Like, wow, my husband, he's communicating with me so much better. My son, he came home, he didn't slam the door tonight. Mm. Oh, me and my daughter are having much deeper conversations. Oh, I got a promotion at work. Because as you start to open the body, now the mind can then see what was in the body because you have to watch what's leaving. Yeah. Wow. It's coming through through a language that your mind can understand, right? Because like you said, you can actually see it. Yes. Because inside of your body, like they don't uh, speak the same language, right? No, your body and your brain. And so I'm actually amazed right now because I am a somatic coach and I also do breath work. Um, and it's so interesting because when I do breath work with people, I mean, everybody always says, I can't remember that much of my childhood. But it's fascinating because as soon as we do breath, they're like, oh my God, this memory just came to me at seven yes. years old. But I'm just recounting all the sessions I've ever done. And I'm noticing that, yeah, when they remember things under seven, it is when I'm doing a somatic session. That's right. Usually breath work, oh. it doesn't go under that six, no. seven-year-old age. So my no. brain is like, I just never put those two together. No. Um, so I'm just, yeah, yeah, this is really helpful to know. Oh, well, this is great. Oh, I'm so God. glad you're so excited. I'm getting chills all over my body. It's lovely for you're me because when I can share information for people who've actually been tracking what they're doing and are on the same pathway, it makes it so much easier for the listener to be able to upload and uptake because they've yeah. been following you for a while. So they, they, they understand your process. They understand your language. Yes. Uh, here's the most beautiful thing, but you're going to love this. So when you look at the four bodies, each body has its own orientation to time. And the past, wow. the emotional body, is orientated to the past. The mm-hmm. mental body, you should write these down. The mental body is orientated to the future. Mm. The physical body is orientated to the present day to day. And the spiritual body is orientated to the present day to day relative to all lifetimes. Oh. Wow. <laughs> My mouth just dropped for anybody no, who's not watching. <laughs> As soon as you said that each of these bodies have a different orientation to time, I actually knew what they all were. Yeah. But I've never actually thought 
it until you introduced it. Yeah. You, you did the layup for me. Yeah. Um, <laughs> oh my gosh. So again, the mental body is orientated towards the future, which makes sense which because makes sense, when we right? feel anxiety or worry, it's usually future. Yes. When we feel things like guilt and shame and like regret or like anxi- that's emotional body and it's orientated towards the past. Yep. Um, physical body, I say this to people all the time, like your physical body doesn't know what year it is. So it literally is just living right now, in presently that's in right. this moment. Yes. And then, yeah, you're right. Your soul, your spirit, it's it's now, but relative simultaneously. Yeah, relative yes, to all that. with everything. Right? <gasps> that makes so, now, so much sense. Yeah. So because the thing about it is you want to be able to create a map. And so what I did is I created the true Bible. It's called the Bible of Transformation, right? And so I mapped all this out over the last 23 years so that people could go, oh, I get it. And now suddenly what happens is spirituality becomes scientific. Yeah. Because you can track this with anyone. And now it's like, oh, you mean spirituality and science can work simultaneously? Yeah, because if I know that, let's say, for instance, you refer one of your friends to me and she's got back pain. Well, I know that in the back, the back is controlled by the kidneys and the kidneys are a future-minded organ, right? So I already Mm. know she tries to live the majority of her time in the future. But why does she do that? She does that because she has something unresolved in the past. So when you have a trauma from the past, the person then flies into the future to live here. To try to balance these two out. But what happens is when you remove the trauma from the body, what happens is the future now comes back. Mm. And then and you the, can be present. And the past comes forward. And now they can be in the present. See, the only way to truly get into the now is to be physically, mentally, emotionally, and spiritually present simultaneously. Mm. Mm-hmm. You see? And that's why it's important for you to understand like, okay, what do I need to resolve? I need to resolve what's going on between womb and seven. Let me get into the body to do that. Any place where there's any level of pain or discomfort. And I don't mean joint pain. What I mean is soft tissue pain. So muscle, fascia, ligament, tendon, all that connective tissue. It's all being stored there. Once I start to remove and reduce that by about 50%, now my future, my future comes back into my present. And now when Mm. I'm with someone, I'm with them. So when I'm working with someone, I'm never thinking about anything else. You could be sitting Mm. with me for four hours, I promise you. I've never once projected myself into the future during that time. Mm. Because you're not trying to escape your past. Yes, I'm not trying to escape my past because my past is in my present. Mm. You see, because I transmuted it. Wow. Yeah. That reminds me of something that I often talk to my clients oh my about God. in relation to coherence and how, you know, being in alignment and being in coherence is like having four wheels on a car, but if they're yes. all going in opposite directions, you're just staying in the same spot. That's right. And so and it really is about yeah. getting them all pointing in the right direction, which That's is what right. you're speaking to. And it's perfect because in a car, you have four wheels, right? And each wheel is related to one world. Yes. Right? And we want yes. to have this opportunity to be present. Look, think about it. If, if we look over history, if we go through the dark ages, at any culture in, in the world, there was a lot of violence. There was a lot of rape. There was a lot of molestation. There was a lot of suppression. There was a lot of oppression. And there were an intense amount of fears that got yeah. passed through to us through the epigenetics. Yeah, into our sure. bodies today. So the majority of pain that people have in their body has nothing to do with them, and has even everything ours. to do with their ancestors. Yeah, and I've worked on children from five to people as old as eighty-seven, and it's the same story whether they're five years old or they're eighty-seven. The misnomer in personal development is that most people have no idea that they're born into the station that they're in. Mm, yeah. And it's like, you're not born into like out of a vacuum. Like that's there, right. Like there, there's like 13 billion plus years like yes. leading to you. So of yes. course you carry that information. That's right. Yeah. And you're carrying all of the fears, 
all of yeah. the anxieties, all of the self-righteousness, and all of the anger from one generation to the next. And until you resolve it, you're passing it on to your children. And so that's why I always tell every parent, like, look, yeah, you might be 44 and your kid might be 10, but everything that you solve in you right now automatically gets uploaded into your child's nervous system the moment they come into your org field. The moment they come. So let's say both of your moms was like, listen, I'm going to spend the next three years dealing with my subconscious stress, dealing with my unconscious stress dealing with my super conscious stress and dealing with my conscious stress. And I'm going to work really hard for three years, like forget going on vacation and spending money on clothes. I'm going to invest my money into some somatic work, some breath work, some meditation, some vipassanas, some sexual healing. And I'm going to work on this for three years. And I promise you what you will see inside of everyone and both of you, you will see your life exponentially change. Why? Because half the cells in your body are your mom's. Yep. Half the cells in your body are your mom's as well. And so Mm -hmm. whenever she changes, changes in you automatically. Holy Holy shit, shit. We get to Um, curse. Yeah, we do oh, get yeah. to curse. We, we, yeah. we curse on this podcast. Okay. I mean, I know Gina's obviously uh, feeling into that deeply because so much of her intentions for healing have been for her child. Yeah. And I think we definitely still exist within a paradigm where you feel like I've already done the damage. It's like, well, totally. No. Especially yeah. when yeah. you think yeah. about from zero to seven, she's turning nine in three days. Yeah. And so yeah. there is this imprint in my mind of the damage is done. I've you know screwed up the, the most important part, but I see it. I see the impact totally. that my healing has on her. And I used yeah. to cry oh, so many tears of like, why does she need to see me like this? And I realized she gets to see me heal. Yes. And I wish I got to see my mom heal. And I don't know if I ever will, but this gets to be a gift of showing my daughter that it is possible to heal. And I do think of this, you know, as this historical baton that we're kind of passing on from one generation to the next. Mm -hmm. And the baton has not been fully given yet, right? There's, it's like in the middle of being kind of handed over, over the span of her life. And so as the life is going on, the baton is shifting and changing. And, And so I know that my work is not wasted or that it's never too late to start. It's never too late for our children to see the impact when we do look inward and see the outward change. Mm. And so I've already, already seen that in my daughter. And it's so beautiful to have her reflect back to me. She'll say, you know, mommy, I've really noticed that you know, this time you did things differently or this. And it's so easy now for me to be so honest with her when she's going through something difficult Mm because it's relatable to what I'm going through. So it's, I think that's really one of the biggest things that our parents never did for us was talk to us about the problems, which then we learn just internalize Internalize all of that. Yeah. And just keep it down there. And so I feel like this generation of parents is definitely being more open, which, which is a gift, but yeah, my I'm I'm learning a lot today, Chris. So I really am so <laughs> thankful. Um, and you're just really affirming so much of what we we know and what we've talked about. But you've just completely created a whole. I feel like just a whole different color scape of of and perspective of this work. And so what what a freaking gift! Wow, thank you. I appreciate that. So uh, for me, it's oh, fun to be wow. able to relate with you too because you're just so on the vibe. And it's like, oh, yeah. it just gets me excited. Like, I'm so happy inside. Um, what I wanted to tell you, though, the good news is, is that what you're passing off to your daughter, you're also passing off to your mom. Because see, half the cells in your body are your mom's. But half of those, half of your cells are all of her cells. You see? So when you shift and change, she also shifts and changes. So what's crazy is it's I've a, noticed yeah, that yeah. on on my journey because my mom sometimes listens to the podcast. Yeah. Hi mom. My mom <laughs> my mom sometimes watches my content and like she says things like I was conditioned like that. And <laughs> I'm noticing like oh my god like my healing has directly impacted her ability to see herself. Yeah. Um which has been so miraculous, but oh my gosh, Chris, I'm having like the somatic experience right now of my mind literally being opened. This is, yeah. this doesn't actually happen very often, but I literally have this experience of like, I'm seeing stuff that I didn't see before. Yeah. yeah. So, wow. Thank you for opening our minds. Yeah. Um, and 
Yeah. I just want to, I guess, I know you have to go pretty soon, but I would just love for you. I would love to invite you into sharing with our audience, like what is the most important thing that they can do now to begin to resolve all four bodies? Um, because something that I also see in our clients is like when they, once they learn everything that's quote unquote wrong, they're like, oh my God, I'm so fucked up. I have to like fix so much <laughs> stuff. Yeah. Um, so I know that you've gone through it. It took oh. you some time, but what are some like encouraging like pointers, tips, like ways that you can guide them into moving forward through healing all of these different emotional, physical, mental, spiritual bodies um, without getting overwhelmed and actually experiencing the gift of healing and being present? Yeah, I think the most important thing is... Uh is an honest conversation. So I would say, grab a chair, sit in front of your mirror, look eye to eye, soul to soul into yourself and ask mm. your soul, why am I here? And what are the actionable steps that I can take now to become a better person? Mm. Because when you set that intent and you're looking deep into your soul, you're looking deep into your subconscious. Remember I said the subconscious is like all the sand in the universe, right? So now mm -hmm. you're talking to the biggest part of yourself, okay? And then just setting mm -hmm. that intention alone is going to be good. And then once you have that intention and that's been set, it's just to sit back and to listen, to check in each day with yourself and go, okay, what action should I take? And then set the intent for the universe to send to you the person you need to meet next to get you deeper onto the journey. Because... You know, I live in Los Angeles, so there's got to be, you know, at least 10,000 people here in Los Angeles who are helping people grow beyond their limitations. And mm -hmm. you got to find the right person for you. But one yeah. step that you can take that's an actionable step is to be honest with yourself about your relationship to addiction and which are you addicted to? Are you addicted to the downers? Or are you addicted to the uppers, right? So if you're mm -hmm. if you're finding it difficult to communicate what your real needs are as a woman to your husband, to your mom, to your children, to your father, then we know there's something going on with your pancreas and your spleen. And so the first thing you got to work on is reducing your relationship to sweets. Wait, this is insane because we had a medical intuitive on last year who was like, Sam, you need to check out your spleen. And I was like, my spleen. I, I remember like, that. <laughs> I literally was like, okay. And guess what? Guess who likes sweets? Yeah, of course. Yeah, because it, you like sweets because at least if you get the sweet, you're getting something sweet from life. But the real sweetness in life is being vulnerable enough to communicate what your desires, wants, and needs are to your sphere of influence, because then your needs will actually get met, right? This is literally my journey, Chris. That's crazy. <laughs> yeah, this is, of course. So I've literally been like, oh, if I tell the truth, that feels a lot better. Like, And then interesting, I don't crave sweets. No. I actually am getting what I want from my life. That's right. Um, because the sweetness wow. is being, so the spleen is a yin organ, which means it's receptive, right? So when you access the spleen and you communicate clearly what your desires, wants, and needs are, you're saying to the world around you that, hey, I'm receptive now to receive your love in the place where I want it, in the place where I crave it, in the place where I desire it, in the place where I need it. Mm. And if you're willing to step up and open up that much, the world is willing to meet you in that open space. Yeah. Yeah. But if you cover that up and you just eat more sweets and you suppress what your real desires, wants, and needs are, it creates currents of resentment and yeah. the resentment depletes your energy because yes. resentment is the most toxic yeah. form of oh, anger that. because it's undetectable. Mm. So wow. it accumulates. So it accumulates. Yeah. Right. And mm. you, you can We've override been talking about resentment, right? Which is yeah. like, oh, come on, mm. for Shirley. <laughs> right we can cover it up but you can't cover up like intense frustration yeah because you can yeah, see frustration orderly. it's obvious yes. but see wow. resentment goes hidden that's why it's the most toxic form of anger because mm. no one else can see it yeah it's undercover it's undercover it's hidden remember i said yeah. stress management stress management is anything that's secretive or hidden and resentment is the secret and hidden form of anger 
Wow. And it's the most toxic. So whenever ever anyone dies of pancreatic <sighs> cancer, you already know they were running massive, massive currents of resentment underneath that no one knew about. And so the person's needs never get met. They do everything. They nurture everyone else, but they never nurture their own life with what they really want. Wow. Yeah. I'm kind of scared about my resentment now because <laughs> Gina and I have been actually addressing our own resentments, not towards each other, but more like expressing them. And, <laughs> You'll um, deal with that so part resentful. later. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, but we've noticed in ourselves, like whenever we have like, bigger emotional reactions like it's because of that yeah, it's yeah. because of like that. yeah because the resentment yeah, it, creates heat so of the organs heat. in the body the pancreas the spleen and the stomach are the two hottest right so when you finally do let it out that heat corrupts everything else in your digestive center it corrupts it overheats your liver the heat rises into your brain. When you get enough to rise into your brain, you start flipping out. Whenever someone's having a break from reality, it's because they've been running currents of resentment for like two or three decades. And now that heat has compromised the function of their brain and their behavior. So now they have a break from reality. Come home. Like, yeah. a, like a freak like out. Like a total like freak a... out. And then they do something that you can never come back from. They say something you can never come back from. Because the spleen... <laughs> opens into the mouth. What? Okay. I I want to talk to you for another five hours. Okay. So I you'll know. have me on again as a guest. Yes. Yes. And I part will come two. on and because, share. Yes, well, part two. <laughs> but because I know you have to go and I'm like, I'm hating looking at the clock right now. Yes. But okay, how do we learn this? How do you yes, learn this? I how want do you to learn, learn more every of this? Every time so you the, say got it. So yeah. the first step is to order my book. Okay. 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 Add to, add, awesome. Adding to cart right now. <laughs> adding to cart. Okay. So you yeah. go to, it's easy. You, you go to truebodyintelligence.com. My book is called Free for Life. Right? I love that title. A U.S. Navy SEAL's unique journey to inner freedom and outer peace. Okay. Peace, of course, is the high quality of the spleen. Right? Mm. Freedom is the high quality of the liver. Right? Mm. So um, that's the fastest way. And then what we do when you're done reading the book, you're going to email my assistant, Christina. This is for anyone on the call. She's at assist.rit at gmail.com. And then once you've read the book, I'm open to having a conversation with you. There's no cost, right? I donate that part wow. of my time. Wow. And we'll have a conversation about how I could give you some direction and be helpful. Chris, I don't think you realize how many people are going to call you yeah. after. We're going to get a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's a lot of people who are like, we've had people come on and like share about astrology and whatever, and they just get like a huge influx of readings, which is great for them. So abundant. But uh, just get ready for your email to be okay. off. Yeah. That's great. You might have to I mean, do like a, a group group session or something. And look, if you want to organize it, I will come on I would and I will to. share. And I'll give you my personal phone number once we get off the call. <laughs> <laughs> special, and then special link. And, yeah, special link up. And then we can set something up because, you know, it's with me having all that information, it's useless. But it's useful mm. if we can create a platform to get it out to help your people. And I'm open yeah. to that. Oh my gosh. Yeah. This is truly gosh. such like, a good All I care I'm, about is service. So uh, let's, let's light up some more people, give them good information. And I've already created the map. So it's easy. And there's no guru ship here. You don't have to kiss my butt. You know, I don't do any of that weird stuff. Just <laughs> do the basics, read the book, let's have a conversation. What yeah. lets you, us three have a conversation about how we can co-create something that'd be really powerful for your people. Would love that. Oh, yeah. yeah. I already know we're going to have you inside of the community and yeah. we're going to take this deeper because exactly. everyone's going to listen thinking. to this and be like, wait, you cut off the conversation way too fast. <laughs> I had more things to say. I have more questions too. Same. So I'm just, I truly, like Gina said, it's such a gift to have your presence and your co creative energy here with us. I'm telling you, I, I'm a Gemini rising. So I, I do a lot of research. Like I like yeah. to learn, I like to read, I want to know uh -huh. everything. You, blew my mind today. Thank you. So, wow. That's, that's, that's big deal. That, that makes <laughs> it's a high good. honor. That makes me happy. <laughs> she, your friend knows you really well. She's like, that is yeah. a very high honor. <laughs> yeah, it is. Honestly, because I, I hear things from people most of the time and I'm a bit like, oh, I have a 
have read something about that. Like yeah. it's kind of adding to my yeah. awareness, but this I feel was a whole new paradigm of observing our, our patterns, our traumas, our strama. Um, and I just think that people afterwards are going to feel just so much more honestly, just awake. Yeah. Like, wow. There's so much more to this that yes. I'm aware of. Yes. And um, of course, the more we can educate them and, um, uh, offer them resources. I mean, I mean, we get to heal, uh, the collective, which that's is right. obviously the intention that, yeah, here, shared between us. That's the reason why we're here. Yes. Yeah, in this yeah. very special time on this planet. Mm, I'm very happy to right. be here and be a leader and and to be of service to God and to be of service to source and the bigger vision that humanity mm. has and the opportunities for our children's children's children. It's gonna mm. be amazing. Mm, thank you for that. Um, we have one final question we'll ask you really okay. quickly. Um, so we ask this to every guest, um, but we really want people to understand that on this healing journey, we all go through things. We all cycle through things. We all sometimes can revisit certain themes that we've gone through in the past. And so we're actually curious to ask you, um, is there a common theme that throughout your life and maybe even now that you've kind of constantly been spiraling through or kind of coming yeah. back to you, like a yeah. recurring theme. Yeah, for sure. Uh, for me, it's always been about clear communication mm. and um, communicating and informing those in my sphere of influence around what my desires, wants, and needs are. And so I've mm. always been a very uh, physical communicator, like my body language, my facial expressions, right? And I forget that I don't spend a lot of time in front of a lot of people, so they don't read me through my text, right? Right, yes. And so for me, it's about learning, one, spending time getting clear on what my desires, wants, and needs are, and then inviting people to come in and assist me into getting those desires, wants, and needs met. So good. We're on the same journey. Yes. Yeah. 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 Yes. yeah definitely. Yes. <laughs> and believe wow. me, I my was a sweet hound. Needs to, <laughs> yeah. My spleen needs to be cleared. Okay. Um, I'm going to be ordering Chris's book, adding it to the cart, learning about the receptive energies and organs in the body. Yes. yes. Um, this has been so mind blowing. Thank you so much. Yes. I know you already mentioned your website, True Body intelligence.com. Yep. I'm assuming that's where we can find yep. out about the technologies that you've learned, yep. the book. Um, is there anywhere else we can find you? Yeah, I mean, Anything sure. Else you can go soon? to, uh, I guess, Facebook. Mm -hmm. um, you can go to Instagram. Um, and all my sources are True Body Intelligence or my name, Christopher Lee Maher. Um, Amazing. But Amazing. What I want to say about the book before I go, which there's two versions of the book. There's the regular book and then there's the book that has the energetic integrations in it, that would be the mm -hmm. one I would order because you can already start doing the work of reducing mm. your stress. Are and they I called could, something different? No, they're called or? energetic integration. So you'll see it. There'll be three versions okay. of the book. One is, is like written, uh, audio, audio plus energetic integrations. And that's going to be a much more profound experience. And do them right before you go to sleep because you want to mm. sleep in that energy at night, you want to program your sleep so you're healing while you're sleeping mm. rather than healing while you're awake. It's so much more mm. productive. Yes, because you're not interfering with the process yes. with your mind. <laughs> yes, yes. Oh my. Well, I'm definitely going to be there um, as well as our listeners reading and doing the energetic integrations. Um, this was a part one for sure. Yeah. Yes. I know we're going to have a part two okay. because. This is, I feel like we just scratched this. Yeah, yeah, I would love it for it, for um, it to be this season too, because I think it's just too much of a cliffhanger. <laughs> 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 this is creating stress in my body. Because I'm like, I want more. <laughs> so we'll have to Seymour. feel this. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> thank you so much Chris we cannot wait thank for you. the next conversation and yes. uh, looking forward to all of our collaborations and for you listeners what a treat grab Chris's book and um, ask your remaining questions to us in the community we're going to try to organize something so that you can learn more from Chris okay yes. this is very exciting right. thank you so much thank you for listening and um, one last thing as you implement these strategies your mind's going to get more quiet your body's going to get more comfortable your emotions are going to be more grounded and your energy is going to be way more abundant. Mm. There's so much life to live. Oh, 
All we could ever hope for. All we Thank could you ever so hope much, for. Chris. Thank you. We'll talk to you next time. Bye. Bye-bye. Thank you so much for listening to this honest conversation. We hope it brought you peace, clarity, and a little bit further along your spiritual journey. If you loved this episode, it would mean the world to us if you left us a five-star rating and a review so we can bring you more conscious conversations, spiritual topics, and guests. And we lovingly invite you to join our free Spiraling Higher community by clicking the link in the show notes to continue this healing dialogue and share with us how this episode impacted you. Come on in, introduce yourself, and meet your conscious besties in a safe space for healing conversations between us and other like-minded people on their healing journey. Here's to Spiraling Higher. Thank you.